Okay. All right. Well, thanks for joining us again this week. We're happy to have you all. I'm glad to see you all again uh, twice in a week. We had bingo on Monday, so it's nice to, mm -hmm. to get two times to see you all. Makes my week a little bit better. But we've got a guest today from the Sheriff's Department with New Hanover County, uh, Mr. William Montjoy, and he's going to uh, talk with us today. So I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. How's everybody doing today? Not fine, bad. Fine. Not nice bad. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I'm, I apologize. I'm at an event right now. I wanted to jump on the Zoom call and I can't find a very good angle that is very flattering for me. So I apologize for that. In advance. <laughs> you look fine. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So uh, we're going to talk about something that uh, we're going to talk about some scams. And, and if you guys have any questions, please feel free to, to ask me the questions. Um, as you may or may not know, uh, scams, especially involving the senior population, uh, you're being targeted, unfortunately. Um, there's a lot of different scams out there. I um, mean, we'll talk about a, a few of those today. But how many of you guys have got the phone call uh, about your extended car warranty? Has everybody got that pretty much? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so the biggest thing uh, the, the per that I could tell you across the board about scams is if someone calls you, and ask for your personal information, don't give it out. That's the biggest thing. Don't give it out. Um, a lot of these scams, they're coming across in other countries. Um, so it makes it very hard for us to actually locate and prosecute. Once the money's been sent, it makes it very difficult uh, for us to be able to do that. Now, the good thing is a lot of times your banks, um, your credit bureaus, they'll work with you. They'll be able to refund you that money if they can prove that it's uh, fraudulent. But still, it's a lot of time and a lot of frustration that you have to go through to get that uh, money back refunded. Yes, ma'am, Miss Brown. Uh, Do you um, have a question? It, it, this is, it, yes, this, this is a statement. Last week, my Absolutely. bank alerted me that someone was, tr was trying to draw out. Uh, it's $250 a week out of my account. And I called the bank and they just stopped it because my yep. bank alerts me when there's something unusual, you know, they think it's unusual, you know, on my account, they alert me. Yep, and when I got the alert, I called, I said, oh, no, uh-uh. Yep. And, and there's no telling where they got your information from. They could have, you know, it could have been an email you clicked on, a link you clicked on. It could have been at the gas station. Speaking of exactly. gas station. That's uh, what it was. Yep, everybody, everybody exactly topped off on their fuel was. tank. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you, you think of that like a, a, a fuel pipeline, you know, they just got hacked and caused this mass hysteria. Mm -hmm. So it's, it can happen to anyone. Um, I yeah. myself am a victim of, of identity theft. I, when I was uh, 13 years old, I had a sheriff deputy show up to my house in the county I lived in. And uh, he was trying to serve me with child support warrants. <laughs> and I, I was 13 years old. Yeah, I, I didn't have a kid. Uh, come, come to find out when I started working, um, someone had been using my social security number. Mm. And it was, at first, it was a lot of uh, hassle, you know, to get that uh, documented and recorded. And I've got checks yeah. on it. If Anytime someone runs, runs my credit, I get a notification. A lot of things that are put in place now. But at the time, you know, I had no idea. And it's, it's, I can work through it now just because I'm so used to it, but you just got to be careful. Mm -hmm. Credit reports, credit reports are awesome. You get one credit report free every year. Um, mm -hmm. You know, highly encourage you guys to do that. Have you guys heard of some different scams other than the car warranty that are out there? Yeah. Like, like what's Mr. George James, what's your one you heard of? Uh, beg your pardon? Yeah. Uh, I've had a, uh... One of the things that uh, I've gotten phone calls from Social Security telling me that uh, yeah. my Social Security number has been blocked because of, uh, of problems, and yeah. is one of the one of the things I already knew it, but then I did call Social Security and, and inform them about it because Social Security is not going to call you on the phone and tell you you got a problem with your car. That's number one. that's number one. And then yep. another another time I was sent a check to be deposited in my account. At mm -hmm. the, and, and what I did was I went to the bank with the check and told them what the, what the problem was. And they said, no, what they would do is you deposit it and then they would take 
you start Everything withdrawing is- money out of your mm-hmm. account. Mm-hmm. And so they put a, 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 a uh, alert on it and everything. Absolutely. And and you hit the, the nail right on the head, Mr. James. Um, when, you know, the Social Security Administration, the IRS, uh, this is the good old federal government. They're not going to call you. Um, they're going to yeah. send you the good old snail mail in the mail, the hard mm-hmm. copy. They're going to send that. So you mm-hmm. get an email saying it's from the IRS, Social Security, mm-hmm. unless that's something that you've requested or subscribed to, it's yeah. probably fraudulent. So don't, yeah. I wouldn't click on it. I'd delete it. And yeah. if you do do something like that, if you do give out your personal information, we all make mistakes. We all have bad days. Please, please, please report it. You know, a lot of the seniors, they're ashamed that they, they fell for this, but please report it. Let us know because it's not just you, this, the victim or this fallen prey to this, it's other people. So we can get the message out there. Um, yeah. And Mr. James, you also brought up a good one to reference the, uh, the checks. A lot of times, the companies will say, okay, I'm going to send you this check for a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is you take the check, you put it in your bank and you send us uh 20,000. Yeah. Well, people <laughs> will, will do that. They'll put the check in the bank. They'll send the 20,000. Guess what happens to that check? It bounces, bounces. It takes a couple of days bounces. and then you're out 20 grand. Mm-hmm. So you got to be very mm-hmm. careful. Uh, the bell, there's a bell bond yes. scam. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. Yes, yes ma'am. Miss Brown. Yeah. Uh, uh, getting back to that, that, that scam, um, I got the same scam from the Social Security. Somebody called me from the Social Security, said it from the Social Security, my Social Security number, and I asked them what was my Social Security number, and they immediately hung up. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. the other, yeah, and the reason why they got my information before, because I got an email and said that I had one of uh, uh, I some some kind of something. Anyway, they said I had to pay a dollar and something for the shipping fee. I did that, and they ended up taking twenty five dollars out for that and the shipping fee, which I wasn't supposed to pay anything for the gift. Mm-hmm. So that's when that's how they got my number to keep draw money out of my account every week. So did you a, get a lot gift? of times? So I won't do that again. Did they send you a gift? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got it. But I wasn't supposed to pay that for it. But okay. I let that slide. Okay. But the other when they try to take a, a 200 and some dollars out of my account every week, I said, oh, no, the bank alerted me. And I called the bank, and the bank stopped. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and a, a lot and of times, too, you know, they, they get your information. Um, there's no telling where you can get it. But like I said, please, please, please report it. Um, a lot of times restaurants, um, people, we, we're such an easy society. I'm gonna hold up my card right here. You know, I got that little chip right there. <laughs> I can just walk by and hit that on the, the little charge thing. And it takes the money right out. We're so, you know, accustomed to everything being simple. Uh, you go to a restaurant, the waitress, they, you pay with a credit card. They take your card. Do you have your eyes on that card the whole time? Nope. No, nope. they could be writing down that number. They could be writing mm-hmm. down all the information. I'm, I'm not saying they would, but yeah. they could. They could. Right. Mm-hmm. You got to be very cautious, even the, at the gas pump. Yeah. The yeah. card, the card I got is it's a debit card. A lot of times I'll put it in and it asks me for a pin. I never put that pin in mm-hmm. just because I'm, I'm uncomfortable, you know, putting Green that button. information in there. What well, if how it do is you happening? get your gas? Then how do you get your gas if you don't put the pin in? You can bypass it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll run as like a credit if you, if you get no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yep, it, mm-hmm. it'll bypass. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the other scams we got, uh, the, we call it the bell bond scam, where, uh, hey, uh, little Charlie's been arrested, your grandson, yeah. your granddaughter's oh, yeah. been arrested. I've heard that. You send us this much. Yeah, again, mm-hmm. don't do it. Uh, I know in some of the other counties, it was in New Hanover County a couple of years ago. I haven't heard it recently, but they'll someone will call you. Hey, I'm Billy Montjoy with the New Hanover County Sheriff's Office. You got a warrant for your arrest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pay yeah. This amount of money, and I'll let you slide. The sheriff's, yeah. if you, y'all don't have no warrants. Don't worry about it. They're not going to call you and tell you. <laughs> all right, so don't believe it. Mm-hmm. Hang up um, on them. That's what I do. Absolutely, huh? absolutely. Keep that mm-hmm. information and. If you ever have any questions, if you ever are contacted, you can call 911 or you can call the sheriff's office directly and say, hey, do you have an officer such and such? Mm-hmm. You know, 
letting us know about this so we can get the information out that's so important because it just changes it ever evolves and like i, I said at the beginning a lot of this stuff is is out of uh, the united states so it's very very yeah. very hard to prosecute mm -hmm. and get them back mm -hmm. uh some of the other scams tv radio scams um i got an old saying if it's too good to be true it probably is mm -hmm. not true right yeah so right. you get the email you know mm -hmm. the email from uh, Publishers Clearinghouse saying you just won a million dollars. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't put in to be in Publishers Clearinghouse. Mm -hmm. Why are they sending me an email? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, family caregiver scams. There's there's all kinds. Of, you got to protect yourself. Like I said, the federal government generally won't send you an email unless you ask right. for it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, they'll do the snail mail. If there's a, a organization, I know organizations are really big uh, asking for donations. There's great organizations out there. I myself, like I said right now, I, I didn't want to tell you where I'm at, but I'm at Dunkin' Donuts. Don't judge me, okay? Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. We, are, we are out here raising money for Special Olympics, and it's oh, it's good. a great cause. Mm -hmm. But if you if you get that notification, you know, follow up. Make sure it's legit. Call the organization. Hey, are you guys doing that? We have uh, the New Hanover County Law Enforcement Officer Association. It's a legit, it's a legit, legit um, yeah. organization. But what they do is they call people on the phone and they tell them to leave the money under the doorstep. Mm. Now, if that doesn't raise red flags, I don't know what does. <laughs> <laughs> right? Never heard but, that one. Yeah. Yeah. It, that one. It is legit, mm. but there's nothing wrong with calling them and saying, look, I got this call. This person says, I, you know, I want to help you out. I want to leave the money, but I'm a little suspicious. You know, verifying the information, making sure it's accurate. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. And then if you do make a mistake, if something does happen, please, please, please let us know. Report it. Report it. Report it. Um, there's no shame. There's no shame in your game there. No. Let's see. Uh, some other things. Uh, computers. We were just talking before we got started about how, you know, the pandemic has caused us to really rely on computers in these Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. I, and I'm sure Rachel is, and I'm sure all you are, I am a Zoom expert by now. All I right. can put a little hat on my head. <laughs> I, can do, I can do all of these things. Uh, make sure your, your virus software is up to date. You know, that's a, that's a, it, it's a, it's a small price to pay for, for your security and the data and some of the stuff that's on your computer. Um, if during a, a meeting, you know, you get one of those boxes that pop up and say, you know, uh, click here now for free such and such. Don't click on it. No. A lot of time it's just it's just a bait to get you to click on it to log in something so they can steal information that you have on your personal computer. Yeah. And again, report it. You can call the sheriff's office. I assume you guys all are in, in New Hanover County. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If not, I might have jumped on the wrong Zoom meeting. So that's good. Yeah. You can report it, report it to the sheriff's office. Uh, you can report it to the Wilmington Police Department. Uh, report it, please, please. That's the biggest thing. Uh, we got a saying at the sheriff's office, if it's not on paper, then it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, we're really good at documenting and doing things like that's That's, you know, you watch all the shows on TV with the police chases and everything. That's not generally what we do. 95% of everything we do is taking reports and document, 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 document. Mm -hmm. um, I talked about the IRS, the extended car warranty, uh, I'm just going to hit on it. I know we're kind of coming out of the pandemic, but the uh, there was a, a scam going around when the the the, um, the vaccines were coming out. Hey, um, I can I can get you on top of the vaccine list if you uh, give me some yeah. money. Oh vaccines yeah, vaccines are free. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you don't have to pay for that. That's free. You don't have to worry about that. Same thing. The stimulus check. Hey, you haven't got your stimulus check yet? Well, here, give us some money. We'll get that stimulus check out to you really quick. Don't yeah. do it. It's all, mm -hmm. it's all fraud. Mm -hmm. uh, again, personal information you don't want to give out. Mother's maiden name, social mm -hmm. security number, and and a lot of times, uh, it's this is unfortunate. Again, I'm not trying to scare you guys. Mm -hmm. um, they'll go through your trash. They'll go through your mail. They'll get mm -hmm. any information they can. They'll randomly call you on the phone you know, and, and just ask or look your name up in the phone book and say, hey, is this Mr. George? Is this Mr. George? Are you here? You know, um, the hurricanes, I don't know. Hopefully none of y'all fell victim to that where 
uh, people were promising work and not delivering and you'd already pay them because of the uh, damage to Florence or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So it's just a lot of things to be on the lookout for, a lot of information out there. You just got to be really careful. And if you do slip up, if you do make a mistake, just let law enforcement know. That's the biggest thing. So when they ask you for your mother's maiden name, you don't have to give it to them? No. I mean, it, unless it's something you're initiating. Yeah, if, it's something, if, if it's something you're initiating, like if you're going to buy a car and that's part of the application, then absolutely. But if it's something unsolicited that you didn't ask for or you don't know, um, another thing I'll say this, my wife absolutely loves social media and the internet. She is on Facebook. You can get on her Facebook account right now and you can find out what she had for breakfast and where she had it at. A lot of people do that. that. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't, yeah, you don't need to put that out there. Uh, <laughs> you go, yeah. You, criminals are not dumb. You go out on vacation. You're just so excited. You, yeah. you go parasailing or you go scuba diving and you post these pictures. There you go. And you're gone. What is what do the bad guys uh, think? Out of the house. Hey. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. When do most, yeah. know where when you do most breaking and enterings happen, you think? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. When you gone. Yeah. When you're gone during the day. A lot of them happening during the day. Mm -hmm. So you got to mm -hmm. be careful. Got to be careful. Uh, again, I don't know where you guys live out. I know you're in New Hanover County, but if you go on vacation, if something like that does happen, you can call the sheriff's office. You can set up a residential check. We can come check on your house. Mm -hmm. Or if you got something going on day to day, people speeding in the area, um, some suspicious activity, you can call us and we'll do a, a, we call it a special patrol. So you got the residential check if you're gone. And the special patrol, just if there's something out of the ordinary going on, you want us to keep an eye on. I do like I do. Have your mail stopped and your uh, newspaper stopped and your um, mail mm -hmm. stopped. Mm -hmm. Pick it up when Absolutely. you get back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Very, mm -hmm. very good idea. Um, well, you know, well, well, uh, you could have someone to come over to your house and get your mail and your newspaper. Like my, yeah. you know, we go somewhere. We have our son come over here every day, and you know, get check on the house, come inside, and make sure everything's okay. Get the mail, and you know, and take it back. And when we come back, you know, he gives everything. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, all great ideas. Uh, have a trusted neighbor. Same thing, spare keys. You know, if something does happen, you're out of town. Um, mm -hmm. That's all great, mm -hmm. great stuff to have. Great resources. I kind of got off track, and I apologize. Uh, right. I was talking about the credit cards, uh, but you guys, cash is the best way to go. Paying with sometimes cash. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can even get the, uh, you know, you can go to Walmart or Target. You can get the little preloaded credit card if you want to use the credit card. Or if you do lose it, you're only out that amount of money that mm -hmm. that's on the card versus, you know, yeah. everything in your. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Brown. Yeah. Uh, when you're using the credit card, if you don't get cash back, you don't have to put in your number anyway. You can match that green button that says enter and it'll go on through. Yeah, they, like, they can know, run it on debit it out. Yep, they yeah. can run on credit. And like I said, you don't have to these chips, I don't even think these chips, mm -hmm. I don't even think you have to um, enter your pin. I think you just swipe it and, yeah. and it gets it. it mm -hmm. So they, they've made it extremely easy to spend your money. Yeah. So just be cautious. <laughs> just be cautious. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Let's see some other uh, other scams, home repair scams, sweepstakes scams. We talked about that. Government impersonation. We told you that. Same thing. Uh, usually, government agencies won't call you. Now, again, Mike Joy might say, "Hey, you know, we're doing a fundraiser. You want to give?" Some... But still, verify that. Verify right. that. Right. Because how hard is it for somebody to get my name? Right. I mean, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's on my shirt over here. Right, yeah. And I don't know I don't know how many business cards I give out. So it's yeah, it's yeah. not that hard to do. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Because one of the things I, 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 I did when uh, last year, the latter part of the last year, I had neck surgery. And uh, I wasn't home for probably a month. But what I did was I left a light on in the house that at nighttime you could see it in the daytime it was. But then that was one of the things I done was had a light on letting people know, hey, oh, he's still there. 
you know, it wasn't where I broadcasted I was going to surgery, but I just took those kind of precautions and say, okay, leave a light on. People think you're still home, whether you're there or not. And, and you got y'all have already gave some gr great crime prevention tip. Leaving a light on. How much mm -hmm. of your energy bill does that actually leaving one light on? Right. How, long, how much does that make it go up? Um, right. I, I think there were some other things that brought up, but uh, lock the big thing going on now. And again, not trying to worry you guys. Locking your car doors. I don't yeah. know why. Mm -hmm. it's so right. hard. Yes. But lock mm -hmm. those car doors because again, talking about fraud. What's in your car? Your registration. Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. on your registration? Yes. Um, maybe, maybe there's some prescription bottles in your right. car. Right. A lot of these, the people that are going into the cars doing this, they're not breaking the windows. If the car's locked, they're, they're pulling on the that handles. Happens. If it's open, they're going to take anything and everything, your spare change, your car charters, whatever they can get. Um, right. That's what they're doing. But think of that information. I don't have it with me in my car right now, but, uh, your house, your garage door open. Yeah. You leave your car and you got your garage door open. Yep. How many people actually check the door that leads from the garage to their home to make sure right. it's all the time locked? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's really common sense uh, stuff, but a lot of times we, we, we take it for advantage. I mean, we just got to be careful. We just got to be careful. And again, I'm not trying to, to scare you guys, but you just got to be careful with your information. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're putting something on my car. I'm sorry. I had to look at it. <laughs> but do you guys have any other uh, questions? I know uh, Miss Rachel said I could speak to you guys for two hours. So I don't know if I need to give you a break now or wait another <laughs> hour. <laughs> the uh, family members in need, we talk about that charity scams, you know, there's it's, it's just use your common sense and again accidents happen don't be ashamed to report it if something does happen mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's that's the biggest thing that i, I want to pass on to you and not just not just regarding scams if you guys see something um that's suspicious or out of place please call 911 a lot of uh, a lot of people think that you know i call 911 only in emergencies well that might be true uh when I was younger, but it's not so much true now. Uh, law enforcement does so much more, you know, than, than just answering calls. So tell us, knowledge is power. Uh, let us know what's going on. There's something suspicious. Don't just put it on your social media, your Facebook page that you have for your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Let us know what's going on. That's right, the biggest right. thing. Mm -hmm. And don't put it on social media. Everything in the world is on there. <laughs> yes. You better believe it. Mm -hmm. I got a cousin that puts everything on there every single day. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. If I want to know what my wife's doing, like I said, I just pull up her account. I know what she's doing. I know where she's at. It's all out there. Could you explain um, for us what um, you would say? So a good a good time to call nine one one is, and a good time to just call the sheriff's department. Kind of like you said. It used to be you only call in emergencies. Now yep. it's not so much. So could you maybe give some examples of what you'd recommend then? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, again, like I said, if you feel like you need to report it, I always say we used to give out the non-emergency number. I give out 911. <laughs> um, what they do is they prioritize calls. So let's say again, um, you 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 don't you give money, you lose twenty five thousand dollars. To you, that's a big crisis. But let's yeah. say the same time you call them they got a bank robbery or they got something big happen. They're not going to send the deputies, you know, to take your information for the report. They're going to send them to the bank robbery. So they prioritize calls. Don't ever worry about um, that. And if it takes a while, you know, you're welcome to call back. Hey, what's going on? You can ask the deputy. You don't have to come to your house again uh, with, with COVID in place and everything. If you're more comfortable just taking, giving your information out on the phone, you can do that. Now, if it's something that you feel can wait, like I said, the, the, that fraud, it's a, let's say barking dog, barking dog. Again, to you, that barking dog at two o'clock in the morning, keeping you up all night is an emergency, mm -hmm. um, but that might be something that you could call the, the sheriff's office number on. And then mm -hmm. they end up transferring you to dispatch um, and dispatch would be, and dispatch is 911. 
And that's the other thing too. I mentioned, you know, having it documented. Even if you don't want to report, whenever you call that 911 number, guess what? It's recorded. It's recorded. Mm -hmm. So that's documentation right there. Um, I talked about, you know, the fraud and me having to go through all this stuff. If you do have a, a fraudulent bank charge on your on your car, they're going to ask you for a police report. Go ahead and get that knocked out. Go ahead and get that documented because you just never know. Just never know. Did I answer that good, Miss Rachel? Yes, perfect. Thank you. I just wanted you to unmute. Oh, okay. <laughs> Any other questions for me? Oh. I I was joking about the two hours. I could talk about two. I could talk two hours, but I don't know if I could talk about uh, just fraud yeah. for two hours. We'd go, yeah. we'd go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do. Uh, what is what is the uh, percent percentage rate on fraud cases that you guys solve? Wow, you put me on the spot there, Mr. James. <laughs> Oh, um, it all didn't depends. Mean, I didn't mean to. <laughs> no, you're good. When you when you say solve, uh, what resolution? Um, as far as arrest, I would say it's very low because again, a lot of these are out of country, and you know, I'm just we're just New Hanover County, right? Yeah, you know, we our jurisdiction is New Hanover County. Something mm -hmm. going on overseas, they're not yeah. going to let me, you know, go over there to arrest somebody. So that, but as far as you know, people. A happy ending, I guess we'll say, where the people got their money back. I would probably say, I would probably say fifty percent. That's just me guesstimating. That's not right, officially right, right. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. It's it's a tough it's a tough thing. I mean, you know, especially when you're dealing with uh, you know businesses like banks that deal with this all the time, where you know they kind of know the loopholes and they know what they need to do. So it's it's right. it's just a tough tough thing, tough situation. And I know Rachel is recording this, so I hope I'm right. <laughs> we can we can fact check it later on. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> well, I kind of have a question. Um, I'm just you're from the sheriff's department, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this probably is not for you, but I just want to know. Oh, on the block where I live. There are a lot of Airbnbs. There are a lot of them. And they take your parking spaces. What can you do? The, um, the guy that owns them, if I see him, I'll say, you know, please have them not park in this particular spot because I have trouble getting in and out of my car. And if I got to walk down the block, to get in my car with my leg, it's kind of hard. What mm -hmm. can you do? Because some of the people, if I say something to them, they'll move. But some of them tell me, yeah. this is not your street. I mean, it's your street, but this is not, you don't own the street is basically what mm -hmm. I'm saying. What can you do? So the biggest thing, like I said, uh, if, if it is a problem where people are proper mm -hmm. parking improperly, yeah. Definitely, you know, let them know, let the officers come out there, let them check it out. And again, guys, I, I don't, I don't know if you guys think that we have a quota or anything like that, but it's not like that for the most part, you know, we enforce what we have to, um, if there's a situation where we can let someone off on a warning, that's our discretion. Uh, we can mm -hmm. do that. So let us know um, if it's something where he's operating a business, you might be able to contact the better, better business bureau. Um, oh, he'll say something. That way. If I see him, he will say something to him. But I don't see him all the time. But sometimes I, I have to go down the street in the park, and I just don't yeah. think that's right. I'm a homeowner, and these people are no, here I, today and tomorrow. They're gone. Uh huh. I I definitely understand you, and I hear you on that. Um, this communication, like you're trying to do, it sounds like maybe get his number and and see if you can get his cell phone and call him. Um, if you if you don't see them every day, or figure out some way day. in the neighborhood. Do, do you guys have a, a community watch by chance where you live? No, um, I don't. I'm okay. I'm near the historical district, and um, they just come. Yeah, down the street there are Airbnbs. So all around us where we live is 
the, these Airbnbs. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And, and, and there might be something uh, with city code or something there within the historic historical distant, district, because I know they do have some requirements for that area. Oh, and there might be something like there. That, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that might uh, might be able to help you out. But definitely, about- definitely, please, please reach out, reach out to law enforcement if you're having that issue and let them see what they can do. And Community Watch, Neighborhood Watch, it's a great thing. Um, I can't speak for other agencies, but it basically gives you a deputy that you can have contact with if there are issues like that and they can help you attempt to resolve those issues. So. Okay, well, I can do that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't want them to think I'm being mean. It's just that it's hard for me to walk a, a, a long ways for my car. Miss is Bowden, right? Miss Bowden, yeah. mm-hmm. don't worry about don't worry about people thinking you're mean. Yeah. They're causing you an inconvenience. Don't worry about mm-hmm. that. Right. Same thing. Like I said, you know, don't ever think calling I want. Don't ever think that you're inconveniencing or or putting some out of the way. That's that's their job. That's what we get paid for. Okay. You know? That's why we're making the big bucks, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> over here. There we go. <laughs> Okay. Does anybody else have any questions related to scams or just anything uh, in general? Just like to say that this has been really a good coffee talk meeting. Enjoyed deputy mm-hmm. uh, talking with us and uh, yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. Really enjoyed it mm-hmm. and informed. Absolutely, you guys. And we're anything. Rachel knows she can reach out. I was so excited. I was trying to come see you guys in person and she wouldn't let me. She's like, no, it's a Zoom meeting. I'm like, oh, okay. We're, we're so glad. We'll have that to that plan a special in-person one. We can all yes, meet together, yes. see what I can do. This was this was very informative. It was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll do whatever you guys want. And I know I, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Mont Joy. I'm with the Sheriff's Office. Sorry about that. Um, right. We'll do whatever you guys know, and it, it is our pleasure. We have so many programs that we'd love to talk to you about. Um, you guys can't see it. I'm not going to turn my computer, but I got the lady who's over our horse unit just right outside my window. So, oh. I mean, we could arrange the horses to come out, the canine. Oh. We could even do it a Zoom if you guys wanted to do a Zoom. We're very excited um, to get back out there in the community and, and help you guys in any way that you need to. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for for joining us and for mm-hmm. your information and your time. Good luck with your fundraiser today. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And thanks for joining us pass? remotely. Yes, Are you on Market Street? I am on. Where am I? I'm in Porter's Neck. I'm on the oh, okay. north end of the county. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but Miss Rachel, you you feel free to give anyone my information if they want it. Um, and Miss Bowden, if you want me to put you in contact, you, Rachel can give you my information. And I can put you in contact with somebody in the police department that could help you out, maybe. Okay. Absolutely. Right. I'm happy to do that. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much, and we'll be in touch. Hopefully, we can thank get you. something in person. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you all so much, and have mm-hmm. a great day. Thank you. You, you too. You all Enjoy the donuts. Enjoy the yes. donuts. Yeah. <laughs> I've already had two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I don't have too much going on for the rest of the call today. I hope you guys enjoyed um, Mm -hmm. that presentation. I thought that was a very informative and very important um, topic to go over. So I hope you guys Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, were able to take away some information from that. And like you said, if you do want to reach out to him or have any questions, um, just let me know. I'm happy to give you um, his contact information. Um, For the rest of it, I just had a quick um, senior in the news. I don't think we got to discussed that last week, um, but I thought this one was a really interesting one. I'm curious to see if any of you have um, taken up a hobby similar, but there was um, a woman, she had just turned 60 and she had a stroke. Um, and so she had temporary paralysis on like the entire right side of her body. Um, and she was a dominant right-handed person. So, you know, she's 60 years old and all of a sudden she has, you know, no function. Um, so she had to relearn how to do everything um, and, you know, writing, eating with a fork, brushing your teeth. And she started using her left hand. Um, and so one day she was, you know, working her left arm, trying to work on that strength in it. Um, and she started painting and all of a sudden she realized she was a really good painter. She'd never painted before in her whole life. 
Um, but with her left hand, not yeah. even with her dominant hand, um, she started yeah. painting. So she started doing um, some like art therapy and started doing some different um, classes. She even started, I think, during quarantine using like YouTube videos. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard of Bob Ross. She started yeah. following along with Bob Ross and painting with her left hand. Um, and so now she works with, um, I believe she's up in Oregon. And now she works with the stroke awareness organization that they have up there. Um, yeah. painting for them and then they auction off her painting kind of to raise awareness of what she does but um, mm. I just thought that was a really interesting uh, turn of events I can't imagine going through something so challenging yeah. mm -hmm. um, but her outcome was that she's a really talented artist but mm -hmm. I wanted to see if any of you kind of took up a hobby maybe not because of something as extreme as that but um, but you didn't think maybe you were so good at until later on and oh. you just realized huh I'm actually not too mm -hmm. bad at that. Mm -hmm. I, Mr. I George, you look like you're quite the painter, are you? No, it was, it, what I was thinking about is that when you were talking about it was that I know a few year, years ago, uh, my, my wife lost her hearing and we had to, in our aunt, middle age, late age, we had to learn sign language. Oh, wow. that, that was tough. Oh, I'm sure. You know, but once, once we picked it up, it was like, how much of the sign language you use? And then you, for us, it wasn't a great all of it, but it was like certain things we could do and for each other and so forth. But uh, I noticed now, since then, uh, you watch people that are using sign language and it's like, oh, I know what you're saying. You know, it's like, you know, because you hear people, they were weird, so you sit, mm -hmm. they've signed, where's so and so, where's bread, where's milk, something like that, or uh, uh, haven't seen you in a while or something. And then you, you kind of like watch them and you go, okay, even though you're not using it now, mm -hmm. but you still remember how to use it, I guess is what I'm saying, or how to interpret what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Right? Definitely. But it's like learning a different language, even though you don't use it all the time, you still remember certain words, syllables, or whatever. Sure. Remember when we had those people, <laughs> the uh, sign language place come out and talk with us, and we had yeah. those classes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And that was very an awesome story. and enlightening. But it, yeah. it, it, anybody it, else? Has anybody else kind of picked up something like that, maybe, mm. for whatever reason? Well, I, art, art is not my thing. Yeah, art. Well, um, when I was younger, I used to do a lot, quite a bit of art, drawings, things like that. And uh, then I just, life got in the way, and I was raising my daughter, and I just got out of doing anything like that. And then been with this pen pal program with the foster grandparent program and I've been illustrating my letters to children oh, and yeah. so it's kind of bringing back my art skills yeah. that's awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. I yeah, bet they love that mm -hmm. awesome I'm sure yeah I'm sure they really enjoy that yeah. that's a nice a nice touch a nice surprise yeah, yeah. I hope so mm -hmm. um. <clears throat> well great well thanks for sharing I just thought that was a you know, she kind of took something really hard and challenging, but yeah. out of it, she got something, you know, a new hobby, a new skill, and maybe right. something she had her whole life and didn't even realize. So Particularly I know with, art's not really yeah. my, uh, my thing, but her left hand, awesome. her left hand. Yeah, with something. her left hand, too. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm right handed myself, and I cannot mm -hmm. use my left hand no, at all. Uh -oh, I can't either. Hard yeah. picking up a piece of bread. With your <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. If you don't use it. Well, yeah. I, I'm left-handed, so I can't imagine her not being able to use her other hand. Because if yeah. I had to write with my right hand, I um, couldn't do it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely. sure I would learn, but um, mm -hmm. it would be hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially especially at her age. Yeah. Yeah, right. You know, where, where she was in her teens or younger or whatever, it wouldn't bother her so much. Mm -hmm. But at... at, at You've used this hand for 60 plus years, mm -hmm. and now you've lost it, and now you got to learn how to use mm -hmm. your left hand to become a the dominant hand. You know? mm -hmm. so, 
It's a great point. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I know it is a little bit early this morning. Um, we usually have just a little bit more time, but I um, just wanted to thank you all again for joining me um, mm -hmm. for our bingo. Um, I was telling Ms. Green earlier on the call, um, we're finalizing those details for um, the, the actual sessions that we'll be having in the games uh, with the prizes and all of that. So I took all of your notes and all of your feedback and I talked with Kelly about it. So we'll be um, getting those official dates and times out. It looks like we'll probably be doing it the first uh, maybe week of June, um, first or second week of June, but we're looking at maybe doing twice a month. So as soon as we get that, um, I'll let you guys know, but if you have any questions or any other thoughts about it, please feel free to, to let me know what you're thinking. Um, cause we want to make sure that everybody has an enjoyable time and has an easy time with it. So mm -hmm. again, I appreciate y'all joining me. Sure. Mm -hmm. we, I enjoyed it. It was fun. Me too. Yeah. Good. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad. I'm glad. It'll be nice too that you know it's a, it's a different way to do it, but it, it it allows you know some flexibility. So if, you know we had an in person one one day, and, and you couldn't make mm -hmm. it, but you could join virtually. You could still participate. So um, it'll add some flexibility in later on. But for now, this would be a great way to still get to do it. Um, I know everybody that I've talked with really misses having those big bingo sessions that the center had uh, before COVID. So hopefully, this will be that. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday right. and a good weekend. And I will see you on this week. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you.